This video explains how to perform a principal component analysis, how to draw a loadings plot, and how to draw a buy plot using the R programming language. So without further ado, let's jump right into the R code. As a very first step, we need to install and load the Facto Extra package, as you can see in lines 2 and 3 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason I'm just going to load it by running line 3. And now we also need to import some example data, and in this video we will use the iris data set, and we can load this data set by running line 5 of the code. So in this line of code we use the data function and specify that we want to import the iris data set. So after running this line of code, the iris data set is appearing at the top right, and we can print the first six rows of this data set by running line six of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the iris data set contains five columns with different information about flower species. Now, if you want to apply a principal component analysis to this data set, we first have to extract the numeric columns because usually PCA is applied only to numeric columns and we can do that as you can see here in line 8. So in this case we are subsetting our data to extract only the first four columns which contain our numeric values. We also specify the scale argument to be equal to true to scale our data before applying a principal component analysis. So after running lines 8 and 9 of the code, a new data object called iris PCA is created and this data object contains our PCA results. And now in the next step we can apply the summary function to this data object as you can see in line 11 of the code to show some metrics or to show some summary statistics of our principal component analysis. And as you can see here, we have the four principal components which were created based on our numeric columns. And now in the last row of this output, you can see the cumulative proportion, which shows how well the data is represented by each component or how much of the variation of the data set is explained by which component. And as you can see, the first component already explains almost 73%. And by combining the first and the second components, we have explained already almost 96% of the variation in our dataset. If you would like to learn more about principal component analysis, how to interpret the results and how to apply this in our programming, then you might check out my comprehensive online course on principal component analysis from theory to practice in R programming. You will find a link in the description of this video. Now, if we want to create a loading plot of these PCA results, we can use the FVIS PCA var function, as you can see in lines 13 to 15 of the code. So in this case, we specify our PCA object iris PCA. We also use the call.var argument and we specify this argument to be equal to contrib because we want to show the contribution of the different variables in our data set based on colors. And we also specify the REPL argument to be equal to true because we want to prevent overlapping text labels. So after running lines 13 to 15 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that a new graph is appearing. And as you can see, we can also enlarge this graph by clicking on the zoom button. And then you can see that we have drawn our two principal components, which are labeled DIM1 and DIM2. So this is the first principal component and this the second principal component. And then you can see the contribution of our variables based on these color labels and also based on the length of the arrows. And as you can see, these three variables, petal length, petal width, and sepal length, contribute more to the first principal component, and sepal width contributes more to the second principal component. You can see that based on the direction of the arrows. Now, in the next step, we can also draw a byplot of our PCA results using the FVIS PCA byplot function. Once again, we specify our PCA object iris PCA. This time we want to label only the variables 
because otherwise our plot would get a bit messy. For that reason, we specify the label argument to be equal to var. And then we also specify that we want to color our data points by the species groups in our data set. So after running lines 17 to 19 of the code, you can see that a by plot is appearing at the bottom right. We can enlarge this plot as well by clicking on the zoom button. And then you can see once again, PC1 on the x-axis, PC2 on the y-axis. You can see the arrows of the loading plot. And now you can also see our data points. And these data points are colored based on the three species groups, Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica.